Hi, we're back for another daily devotion. We're in the Beatitudes today, and we are in verse 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness or after righteousness, for they will be filled. And I thought the best psalm or the best reading for this would be Psalm 23. And I kind of had to run through and check and make sure I hadn't done a Psalm 23 uh, one. So it turns out I hadn't. So after a little checking, here we go. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. All right, so sorry, that wasn't King James. And if you have King James memorized, good for you. Um, it's probably the nicest version of the psalm. So we've got here God fulfilling the promise in... Matthew 5, verse 6, through by means of Psalm 23, right? And Psalm 22 and 23, and I have a four-part, or we have four-part daily devotion, so if you have time, you can go back and watch those uh, and refresh your memory in terms of Psalm 22. It will be kind of heavy on the Lenten, Holy Week sort of thing, but then again, Psalm 22 is kind of heavy on Lent and Holy Week on its own. So we've got those kinds of things and themes going on there. So we have this hungering and thirsting for righteousness, and what's going on there is a twofold deal. On the one hand, we're hoping that we get better and that um, why do we keep sinning? And the other side of it is a very concerted why is everything else out here terrible? right? And just looking around makes you think, wouldn't it be great if God came back just right now, just today, and we'll, we'll, we'll just end it all. So here in the 23rd Psalm, what we get is God uh, being our shepherd and leading us to green pastures, right? So we can eat. Um, and those green pastures are figuratively all sorts of things, right? There's all of the good first article gifts that God the Father gives us, articles of the creed, right? House and home, land and family, animals, food, clothes, all of our reason and our senses. Um, there's the food in like actual food, in there too. And then there is grist for our daily sanctified life and by way of his word and by way of the gospel. Uh, so part of this is, is a really concerted effort by God the Father to make sure that we get exactly what we need on the first hand. Then it says, uh, he leads me beside quiet waters. Um, and if it were just a Psalm 23 thing, I'd do a, something about you know, swift water rescues for sheep, um, but we're not going there. Um, then it says that he restores my soul. And so that takes the other half, right? The other half, if you're hungering and thirsting for righteousness and you're looking around and saying, like King David, no one is righteous, not even one, um, it's going to take God to give you his peace. And that's what he does. So again, then we walk through this, and I'll just have a minute here to nerd out. Um, everybody knows the Valley of the Shadow of Death. Um, this is actually a not Hebrew word. This is an Aramaic um, sort of phrase that's dropped in here, um, and it's this kind of spooky, haunted valley. Um, and we're not really sure where this is supposed to have been. It's like all good... Um, sort of of uh, idolatrous and worrisome pagan beliefs, but um, it was good enough for David to use and uh, invoke that image um, of, you know, kind of the haunted valley. And if you're a Lord of the Rings fan, then yeah, you can totally go to the, the Valley of the Dead with Aragorn and, and I think that might actually be where Tolkien got the idea, seeing as how he's a good lifelong Christian. The psalm picks up, though, again, and says, um, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, right? And so those who are hungering and thirsting after righteousness, and go back and read all of the book of Proverbs if you have time for this, right? But who the enemies are all of the stupid people, right? All of the dumb people, all of the unwise people. Um, there's not a nice way to put it, and... and <laughs> 
Proverbs puts it in as diplomatic of a way as possible, but the people who are doing stupid stuff in front of you are going to be your enemy when you do the wise stuff, and they're going to say, you're crazy. That's a really stupid idea. Or go back and read the account of Noah, and everybody who sees him building an enormous boat and does not make themselves at least a life raft, right? <clears throat> so you prepare a table before me, and actually this is church. This is the service of the word. This is going and hearing God's word and receiving his gifts. And that's the meal or the, that God prepares for us in the presence of our enemies. Um, not just the unbelieving world who can't believe that we'd waste a Sunday morning in a, in a building together, uh, but also um, sin, death, and the devil, right? And we go to church and we get a little slice of heaven when we go to church, or we're supposed to, a little view into what the actual worship of God is going to be like on the last day, and sin, death, and the devil are there, right? Satan has better church attendance than you do, uh, and he has better church attendance than I do. Um, he never misses a Sunday because he never wants to miss the opportunity to poke at all of us, right? So Satan's always there. Then finally, we'll deal with the end, which is poorly translated in all of the the versions. I've never seen a version actually do justice to Psalm 23. And it should be this. It's not surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Um, no, the Hebrew word here is uh, means to pursue. And I know follow and pursue seem like the same thing, but the idea with the Hebrew word is to hunt down with dogs and bring to the ground. Um, and so that changes it, you know, it's not like this, like we're walking along in goodness and mercy, like a duck and goodness and mercy are the little ducklings following along behind us. No, no, that's not it at all. God's goodness and mercy. And here in the ESV uh, or the NIV, it's love. Um, no, it should be mercy. Mercy's mercy. Um, they are the hounds of heaven. And so God is looking for those people whom he can uh, hunt down and run after with his, with his hounds, uh, goodness and mercy. And their goodness and mercy, they're not law and destruction or punishment or plague or any of those things. And so when we talk about this, we've got this opportunity um, to actually be embraced by God at the end of the psalm. So it's not follow, it's pursue. So what do we do with this devotionally? Um, if we're one of the people who, on the one hand, we should be people uh, hungering and thirsting after righteousness, right? Jesus says this before his, his death and resurrection, which kind of puts a different spin on it. Um, you have Christ's righteousness, um, but here in this devotion, to borrow from Luther, we pray that our own righteousness might surge amongst us as well. How is this done? By doing what Jesus told us to do, right? So I know you have Christ's righteousness as a garment given to you in baptism. It's a wonderful thing to be wrapped up in. Um, but, you know, you can have earthly righteousness. You can strive to be righteous before God. Uh, it's never a bad thing. It might be doomed to failure, but it's never a bad thing, right? It's sort of the heroic last stand. So devotionally, what we do with this, uh, on the one hand, um, there's uh, a devotional move to pray that God would indeed feed us with good works and feed us with his word and feed us uh, with opportunities to share the gospel. Um, those would all be great if we have that type one, that, that we want to do stuff version. Um, we can also, another devotional move is that God would give us peace. And looking around the country for the last two months-ish, um, boy howdy. Uh, there's a distinct lack of righteousness, and I've kind of tried to stay quiet on it because, <sighs> yeah, but it wouldn't be wrong to ask for God to lead us beside quiet waters and to restore our soul. Um, again, in COVID, even as we're kind of mobilizing and getting the rest of the, the um, country moving again and trying to get church moving again in some functional way, um, restoring our soul and and allowing us to participate in that mission um, by way of God's word would also be a perfectly fine prayer. Um, you can do all sorts of things with Psalm 23 devotionally, uh, and all of those would be options. Um, and so if you don't like the, the hungering and thirsting after righteousness business, you can always just 
punt and straight do um, Psalm 23 for your devotion today. Um, so there's devotional devotional business with this. Finally, at the end, I'd say um, there's a little bit of time to ruminate on being one of God's sheep and and a little bit of prayer, how easy am I to lead? Uh, and this is sort of a one-to-one on how much righteousness you feel like you have, right? If you're bucking and pulling and trying to get away from the shepherd and his crozier, that's the name of the staff, um, not good, really not good, not helpful. Uh, so that's something to think about and pray about. Uh, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, hopefully this will upload in a timely fashion. We'll catch you back here next time.